Okay. You ready? Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, that was not going to work. Remind me, I diff need a different shot. Right. Okay. So here we have watercolor pencils. Uh, this is a box set I got from Calendash. And it's got 20 landscape um, pencils in it. Uh, if you've just got a, a beginner's set, you probably have 12 colors. Um, the beauty of these is they do, in fact, mix. You can actually mix the colors, which is rather nice. So I thought that on this small piece of paper, watercolor paper here, I'll give you a few indications of um, what you can do to go about things. Okay. No, I'm not hearing myself, Twain. Uh, right, so I have this piece of paper in front of me, and, and you'll see I've done a little bit of work on it already. That's for later demonstration. Let's begin at the beginning. You've got your uh, watercolor pencil, and you are and you want to make a wash. So you just um, cover whatever area you want to do. Uh, you can be as as precise. You can take it like this and do it. That way you can scribble it all over. You can go round and round. How you actually get the, um, the pencil marks on the paper is entirely up to how you're feeling at the time. Okay, so there it is. Now, uh, I don't recommend you do this straight away. I recommend you work on a sizable piece of the painting first before you introduce the water. However, if I do that, I've got a, a brush here which I've just dipped in, I've got a little egg cup full of water here. That's how much water you need, you don't need a lot. So if I just put it over the um, scribbles that I've done and I work at it a little bit, I lose the lines and I get my wash. Okay, so however big or little you do, that's one way of getting a wash. Right. Now, supposing you want to put in some really good, strong detail, supposing you want um, to do some grasses, so you're using dark colors, and then you're using light colors, you want these strokes to show, so you can put them in quite strongly, and then even put a little bit of burnt stuff at the bottom, you know, it's, um, it's, been, it's been a tough year, so to say. Um, even maybe a little bit of yellow. So you've got a right mix of colors. And you want all those colors, all those different areas of what you've done to show. Well, you can put your detail in like that. And then when you put your water on, again, it's just a damp brush. It's not soaked in water. I use a flat brush. It takes less water. So you have more control over how much water you use. If I just stroke it on top, like that. I've still got the strokes there, um, but the color has been brightened and brought forward. And I've also got a bit of background color there, which, which, which came in um, by, by purpose of coming off the other, the other pieces. And if there are some bits I don't like, for instance, if I made, wanted to make a gap here, I can work at it with the brush. And just lift that out like that. So you can lift it out as well if you want to. Okay. Um, what I don't recommend is that you, I don't let the water get anywhere near the points of the pencils. It makes them much more difficult to use and uh, reduces the impact of what you want to do. So the beauty of watercolor pencils is you can put in all your fine detail and retain it and you have control over precisely how much detail you put in and where it goes and its direction. So you can get directional strokes because you're using a pencil. So you have all the advantage of using a pencil in a lively fashion uh, with the ability to, to 
um, blend them and make them brighter and put the background in. Now, uh, as well as all that, you can in fact work on top of a wash and put more color in. Uh, that's why I did that wash first, because if you're going to do this, the wash you work on top of has to be dry. Otherwise, you're going to get water on your pencil points, and that will be their ruination, which is not what you want. Okay, so supposing um, I want to put, uh, I don't know, I want to put something on here. Let's, let's say I want to put a fish in the water. There we are. There's our fishy. He's got a thing on his back, hasn't he? Usually I'm sitting on the back and there's his nose. And I'll colour him in so I can do that. And I've got it quite strong. And I can put little bubbles coming up there. So you can do all kinds of things like that. Now, if I then touch just the parts I've done with water, it brings him up quite strongly. So I can put in my wash and then work on top of my wash with another color. And there's just one more thing to tell you about, and that is this. Supposing you want to um, actually paint with the color, what you can do on a separate piece of paper is to scrub some color on quite strongly, really taking a lot of color out of the pencil there. And I can pick it up with a wet brush and paint it over here so I can get a pale wash. So as well as um, being able to paint directly on the painting, I can pick up paint from another source and start to put it in. I could put it in over here if I wanted. Just by picking the paint up from um, a scrubbing of, of the pencil. So that's basically the, the earliest ideas of how to use watercolor pencils, the, the sorts of things you can do with them. I can't say too strongly about not getting the pencil points wet. That does make for a great deal of difficulty. Okay, so let's look at this picture that, um, that we're going to that I'm going to do. I don't know quite what you're all doing. So if I look at this picture and I want to put that uh, piece of concrete in, uh, yes, it's gray, but it's also got a bit of um, greeny agai or whatever else you want to call it, which is a sort of olivey color. I think I'll go for that one. Um, and can I see anything else? Well, I can see I think that's a, um, a, a little bit of the alizarin. And I can do it quite lightly. I can put the color in strongly or lightly. Uh, if you want to try the idea out first, you can try it on a spare piece of paper. Or if you're going to be resolute, you can try it straight away on whatever it is you're, you're painting. Uh, just to give you an idea of the sort of detail you can get and what sort of picture you're likely to turn out. Um, here's one I did earlier, a long time ago. This, this is done with watercolour pencil uh, and a touch of water. So as you can see, I could be quite precise about the, um, the arch and the fencing in the background. They're quite fine lines. And yeah, I could get some texture in the branches and uh, give some darks and lights to the area just, just as I would want to. I suggest the roundness of the pot and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's quite a nice medium. And even the tree has come out in a sort of uh, loosely uh, foliage-like sort of effort. OK, so let's get back to this and quit the chat and get on with the work. OK, so I've got a grey here, so I'm going to start by putting in the gray. And I'm going to put it over the whole thing. Um, yeah. That 
Now, remember, you can't, uh, you can't get back to the white paper. So if you want things light, you've got to leave them light. And only color those things you want actually you want color on. If you want pale color, you color in lightly, as I'm doing here. Because this is not, not as dark as the area underneath there. And then I go on top of that with a bit of the green, because there is a sort of green, but not all over, just in patches. There are places where there's that green. Certainly on either side of this piece of metal here. And it comes down here too. And then just a ghost of the red in places. This is... Uh, Lizard and crimson, just, just a ghost of it in places. So I just I just see a bit of red in there. I don't know if you do, but I do. Right. Now I could start to colour that if I wanted, but I don't really want to do that just yet. I'm going to continue down. I'm going to colour this piece of metal in pale blue, because it's catching the light, but it's not white. And using a darker blue to suggest the edge. There's a little knob there. Right, now, I want to go dark. So if I collect my dark colors, I've got colors that. Well, that tells me it's black. That's okay, that's a good one. Now that's a dark green. In fact, it's Prussian blue, believe it or not. Okay, Prussian blue. Uh, alizarin. So those can go back. I don't want those, they, they are light. I've got a dark purple here. Um, and the, the dark brown, which is actually an umber, this is raw umber. What's that one? That's French grey. Okay. Okay, so this is raw umber. So I've got a collection of dark pencils. And I want to do that dark area under there. It's got quite a strong edge here. So I'll start by colouring in what I can what I can see, this is quite a strong edge. Just go over there. That's quite a strong piece there. We've got more dark in here. And in here. So this, this is the dark area I'm thinking about. It comes across here, it comes over to here, it's here. And there, and there. Right, okay. I've got to leave a bit of room for this light on the top here. It continues on the other side of this. Comes around here. And get smaller as we go away into the distance. So let's see what else I can use. This is another purpley color, so I can put this in. That comes down quite, quite a lot. I've got to leave room for the top of the grasses there. And they come down more or less like that. There. I'll a bit of this. I can take this down here. I can take this down here. Um, what's happening around here? There's that. And then there's a quite a strong mark across there.
That is very strong. So if I put it in very strong. Um, The area is dark, and the area underneath is somewhat dark, certainly dark there. There's a sort of piece of dark here. I'll carry on that colour. I don't want the, um, the dark area to be monocoloured. I want it to be very, very coloured. Doing a bit of the red. Nothing like uh, having a good play, you know. All right. Okay. I would like that edge to be quite crisp there. So. I'll take this edge and make it crisp there. And this is very dark, so I can afford to um, to make this edge that I'm putting in here quite quite strong. And this is the top of the picture, so you know, there we are. This down here is also quite strong. It makes quite a, a, a distinctive shape of its own. Uh, and then we'll put in the various stanchions. There's, there's the, this one here, which is quite light. And then there's the rusty ones. I'll use the two browns. Um, so I can use this orangey color here. And there is a, quite a strong line in that. That is quite a, a definite shape there. This one is more faint. And there's a bit of red in that, so I'm going to put in some of the alizarin on that one as well, because this is just a little more red in colour. We need to colour the top a bit darker. Carry the and that one up at the end is also a reddy brown. This one here. And it can have the darker, the darker brown marks on it. Now, I can continue to work. I can do the, the frondy bits coming down. I've got the two browns out in my hand. So this is um, directional strokes now. It's a bit of lighter, almost orange. Okay, orange, lighter bit here. Then they trail down. Go back with the other browns. Work. On them. Some of these come quite a long way down. Some of them are quite tangled and seem to go back up into each other. Put a bit more orange in there because there is a light affair down there. So let's get a bit of orange into it. Again, down here. A 
But uh, they're not all light. There are some dark bits in it. Don't forget your your deeper parts. So we've got to think of some of the darker parts. We come in. This is quite dark here. Still fondy bits, but it's dark. If we look further down here, the strands go in all kinds of directions here. They're very crisscrossed and tangled and uh, going in all directions. Again, don't get hung up on one color. Be sure to introduce other colors. Because they're not one color, they catch the light differently. Put some darks in because there are darks. Mm, a touch of green in there. We can put a bit of green in as well. Before we continue, we ought to look at this here, which again is those light colors that I used to, to do the concrete, well, perhaps not quite the same. I think I, I can certainly see that light. Uh, where is it? Here we are. The lightest color. That is definitely showing at the top here. quite strongly where the things are catching the light. And then it is lightly in among all the other things here. It seems to struggle a bit, almost as if some of the fronds have turned the same color as the, as the background. Now here it'll be much darker. I can try the darker gray. I don't want it to be very so dark as to be fighting that because that's got to come out really strongly as dark. I'll introduce a bit more of the red if I can only find it in this handful. There we are. Into this darkish area. Just Shading it in lightly. Now, being watercolor, you can put dark on top of light. So if you find something that you want to um, add a bit of light to, you can do that. I'll put a bit of red in there just, just lightly. And I think I'll put a bit of the Prussian blue in as well. Because I can see places where the wood of the gate is, is catching the light differently. And down here we've got real dark. But it's not, although that edge is there, it's not so much there that you can. Um, That, it, that, that the bottom is not a straight edge. It's got these fronds coming over it, and the darks actually drift up into the fronds. It's so tempting to. I'm going to stop now and put some water on because I want to see what happens. You know, it's, it's very tempting, isn't it? It's very tempting. Um, Green, some directional greens here. They're falling down here. And we have the darker green as well.
Um, I'm going to give in a minute and put a bit of water on. It's actually quite desperate. But let's see what happens if I if I tackle this with a bit of water. Now, there's no point in just dipping it in and going psh, 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 all over the whole thing because you're doing what you're doing. You've got to take it bit by bit carefully so that what you're actually doing is enhancing what you've done. Okay. If I take this part first, I don't want to go, you know, go around the things you want to go around. You have to take much more pernickety fashion than I'm used to. That's quite, it's not very difficult, Steve. Right, okay. Now, that's more or less the same color as this, not quite. So I can go on here. And produce the idea of this um, piece of timber here. And you can see I'm lifting the paint from the bottom to get that shaggy bottom to the to the piece of wood because there's some old brass bits there which are having an effect. I'll stay with this. I'm not going to go on to the other color yet. There's a bit here. That's got quite dark. Ten minutes. There. Oh, we're not going to get very far, are we? Ten right. Um, if you pick up too much dark paint when you're doing it, you have to rinse out your brush. Okay, so that's beginning to come. Now let's look at this dark bit, see what happens here. This is going to be strongly dark, isn't it, here? It's quite strongly dark. Those stanchions do stand out quite a lot, don't they? So before I put in the um, the darkness at the top of the uh, this part of the lock, this is actually quite dark. There. Going to show up quite nicely, isn't it? And just finish it off down here. Now, if I feel that's not dark enough, I can go back and um, when it's dry and put in more color, that's certainly possible. Right, I'll clean that up. Just a whisk of water on here. I want that to catch the light. Yeah. And these stanchions. And again, I was tempted to go from the brown one to the gray one. Um, resist the temptation. Stick to the color you're working on. And this brownie color comes into these areas here, so I can add these. And because I've got it on the brush, I can even bring it down out of those. Uh, pieces as I've done, just picking up the paint and taking it down into the other areas. Cut this one in. And then there's quite a lot of dark up here. Let's see if I can pick up a bit of dark now. I'll have to go back with that 
and put in that dark area underneath the top. But you can see it's brought that little bit to life now just by putting a bit of water on. Uh, and unusually for me, I've already got a bit, quite a lot of detail in there. So uh, that's, uh, that's different, different to what I normally do. Right. So you can, you can see how you can um, use your the water to modify the, the pencil marks and the pencil marks to, um, to change the uh, picture. I can go back in there when it's dry and work on those grasses that are dropping down and put quite a lot of uh, texture in there as well. So these, uh, pencils are very good at creating texture. I think I better stop there, Rachel. What? How? How are we doing? Timing. Right. Okay. It makes sense. Right. So I've given you a little indication of what these pencils will do. Uh, if you're working in a fairly traditional way, I have never tried to use them in anything very way out because I'm not that kind of painter. But I'm pretty sure they could be used in a um, much more flamboyant sort of way if you wanted to do so. But to me, it does give the advantage of being able to put in detail that I don't normally put in because I've got more control over the pencil stroke and where the actual paint is going, um, which I find satisfying. I'd be interested to have any feedback. Anybody who has a go and wants to tell me what they think of it, but don't expect an answer soon because we're off on holiday tomorrow. <laughs> right. Okay. So I will prepare the videos and upload them later tonight so I don't have to do it while we're away. We will be reconvening on the 7th of June and the links will be sent out once we get back from France and not before. Um, other than and the that, subject. Oh, yes, and the subject. Um, other than that, have a great couple of weeks. Um, we will be having adventures. We hope we will have much to tell you. And I shall end the meeting and see you all soon. <laughs>